And today you're in for a treat, as we have a little bundle of joy, who is going to be delivering the message of love this morning. She is all about love and joy and energy overabundant. Please help me welcome Reverend Sonia. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Carol, for being with me this morning to support me. <laughs> My talk this morning is in the presence of love. And I just want us to start, a little unusual, but I want us to start by spending a few moments in silence with the phrase, I am saturated with the essence of love. I am saturated with the essence of love. Please close your eyes and just be with me for a few moments. And so it is. Dr. Tom Costa, a religious science luminary, was once asked by an enthusiastic congregant, what shall I do to promote peace? His answer, go home and love your family. Everything begins right where we are. Go home and love your family. One Hector Amezquira said, you do not need to think about divine things, but think from your divine self. We don't fight what we want, but favor its opposite. When we are busy looking at the world with concern, thinking with good intention that surely something must be done, how can I be a part of it? Remember the words of Tom Costa, practice love. Practice love right where you are. Go home and love your family. We know that God is love, but that love finds expression through us as a loving life. The mystery of life is revealed in the consciousness of love. Love is a creative, cohesive force. Love is all powerful. Whatever difficulties we may find ourselves in at this time or any other time, no matter how it seems insurmountable. If we can meet it with a marvelous feeling and knowing and being of love, we can rise above it and do whatever is necessary to handle it. There is no difficulty that love will not conquer. In the presence of love, there is divine order, there is peace, there is power, there is beauty, there is wholeness. There is whatever good we choose to affirm and know because God is love and God is infinite. Therefore, love is infinite in its ability to express in loving ways. Love heals, love protects, Love unites, love frees, love prospers. Love heals. We had a wonderful sharing in one of our classes where one of our members shared with us what we consider a pivotal moment where a family member who was not well and who was living in a state of maybe disturbance about that 
condition. The members of the family collectively agreed to just live from love, to experience the love within their own hearts. Just experience it and look away, not with lack of compassion, but look away and not reinforce any affirmations of illness or disturbance from the family member. They decided they would be happy and just feel joyous. And something wonderful happened and is continuing to happen. The family member who was experiencing that disturbance began to feel the joy and the peace that was being felt by the other members. They intuitively knew that the way to be in themselves and not be affected adversely and also to make a difference was to themselves feel that joyous expression. That was a big aha movement in the class. Classes are wonderful, you know. When you come, you learn so much from the sharing of those persons who are on the path practicing all that we are teaching. Very practical. It's an advertisement. Do come and also experience and share as well. I also find this for myself because of the profession that I'm in, that I prepare myself at the beginning of the day on rising. I prepare myself as soon as I get into my workplace um, by knowing that that place Anyone who crosses the threshold of that workplace is instantly uplifted by the transformative power of God's love, light, peace, and joy. Then I sit with my admin assistant, and then we do our prayer. She prays in her way, I pray in my way, but it is just one, just oneness. And there are times when, even after we have prayed, we have reason to go within and really connect with that healing power of love many times and watch, yes, yes, even in awe, although we know, as the effect of that consciousness that we have decided to live from takes root and takes and, and transforms. I shared on Ash Wednesday one of the things looking back as my patients grow older with me, one medical student said, when did you decide to do a geriatric practice? I said, I didn't. <laughs> My patients have been with me for over 40 years, and so they have grown with me. And I have noticed that our conversations and our interactions, more than 90% of it has nothing to do with their bodily affairs. It's just connecting in a very loving and deep way. And I have evidence that this is a healing power that takes place and little to do with the prescriptions that I make. Love protects. If one goes from one's house with anything but a loving thought in one's mind, one is not in fact in a place where one is, will attract all the protecting power that, oh love, <laughs> love of a child. The love that we are feeling in our hearts allows us to know that there's no need to fear. There's no need to be concerned. And it is that feeling of love that is the magnetic quality that attracts to us experiences. If anyone would come into our presence who are not feeling that sense of love or would have any intention other than love, immediately is dissipated. And the same affirmation I have for my practice, anyone who comes into, crosses the threshold, I say it for myself. And I say, and I put it to you as something you could consider. Anyone who comes into my presence is instantly uplifted by the transformative power of God's love, light, peace, and joy. When you are affirming that, then you know for your house when you are leaving it, for your presence wherever it is, you have sealed it. You are not involved with what anybody chooses to think 
or intend. You only know that in your presence, all of that is dissipated. Love unites. If we know truly that we love, it is natural to be loving because loving springs naturally from love, which is the awareness that we are one with the one. There's only one, one, that's the core belief of the science of mind. There is only one power and one presence. And that power and that presence manifests as us. So just knowing that allows us to recognize our connection with anyone who comes in contact with us. And that is a consciousness which unites. And being in a consciousness of unity pays great dividends because we are able to strip down the appearance and see deep within the beauty that resides within whoever we meet. Because if we know that beauty for ourselves, you must know it for another. And if we know it for another, it must be true for us because we are one, coming from the one source. And love frees. Love frees because when one truly loves, especially one loves the self, there is no demanding of anything from another in, in terms of, yes, I need you to do or to be. <laughs> Approaching, I'm about to approach in a couple of months, 50 years of living with the same man. And I had to learn this one very quickly <laughs> in my relationship. And as looking back, I wanted to share one of the many stories that might help you to understand the journey that I have taken. I decided long ago that I would have a surprise birthday party for my husband. Surprise meaning I wasn't going to tell him anything about it, right? He was going to come home and he was going to find everybody there and everything and, he, and it was just going to be one joyous occasion. Well, the guests came, everything was laid out, and guess what? No husband, no husband. Waited, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, <laughs> no husband, 11 o'clock. Something wonderful happened though. Fortunately, I had already begun to be a part of this teaching. And I look back and said, five years before, that would have been a totally different experience. <laughs> and all of the, the, the affirmations of love and so on that I had been going through found its opportunity to be loving. So what happened is I found that place. And all of the guests found it, stayed on because they wanted to see what was going to happen. <laughs> It was a joyous experience. It was full of fun and laughter because they were more chastising than I was and we all had good fun. Love frees. And so that was one big happening. And I would say that the lesson that I have learned most in living with the same person in a feeling of peace, and fulfillment for so long, the key word is freedom. And, but the freedom doesn't mean license. And it doesn't mean that you do no work upon yourself. The freedom is within you. Because, you know, you ever heard you say, get a life? If you are content with yourself, and you, you will have a life, for yourself, you will make a life. So the life that you are living will be your life. It will not be looking to somebody else to satisfy anything in you. And therefore, when you have a life and you're joyous, you will be rewarded by, wow, when that partner, whoever it is, steps across the threshold and they say, wow, I feel so peaceful in this place. I feel so peaceful in this place. You are not having any intention 
to project any feelings of what you want the person to be with you. You are creating an atmosphere of love within yourself. And you take that atmosphere from your home, wherever you go on the street, in the workplace, that atmosphere is one which frees everybody to be themselves because you have already given yourself permission to be free. And therefore, that is what you will transmit to others. Dr. Ernest Holmes says, take responsibility for your own happiness. We are free to choose how we will feel. You can only change the past by changing your interpretation of it. No, there's something I feel very strongly about. Long ago, parents did not buy, they had not yet, many, bought into the idea that you shouldn't spare the rod. Spare the rod and spoil the child, right, okay. And so many of us sitting here, if we choose to admit it, may have had the experience of being spanked. <laughs> However, there is something interesting. The modern generation have been told that even raising your voice a few decibels or even an open-handed slap is, is what? What do you call it again? Uh, abuse. Abuse. No, when my brothers and I were alive and we sat down together on family holidays, as we usually do, we were all sharing jokes about who ran away from the beating and who went, went under the bed and who bawled loud. And every time you bawled loud, you were told, Shut, don't bawl so You have to bawl loud, you know, because you're beating the bed foot. And, and it's you stop the noise or you'll get a beating. And then when you don't bawl, you hear um, you, you, your, your bare face, right? Yes? It's how you interpret your life experience that makes a difference. I'm not saying it was either necessary, my parents thought it was necessary, but at no time at all did we ever feel unloved. There are other things that they were doing, but most of all, what they were, what? Being. It is your, the intention of anybody behind the words that you speak and your actions that makes the healing difference. You could speak all the nice words and your thoughts are opposite. People are going to pick up what you're feeling. And sometimes a boy is so nice to this person, you know, especially in the workplace. I'm so nice, I speak to them all the while nicely, and yet they, they, they treat me as if they don't like me or they act that way. Search your own thoughts. You cannot get back anything more than what you are giving out. Search your own thoughts. You cannot build, this is a quotation from Frank Richelieu, The Art of Being Yourself. We must learn to love ourselves, he says. The love to which I am referring cannot be forced. It cannot be manufactured or pretended. It is an outpouring of goodwill and reverence for life. It radiates to the hearts of all people and all things. I read recently that 50% of the workplace stress has to do with relationships. Relationships. And consequently, Many of the persons who turn up with illnesses, especially illnesses related to the heart, have been experiencing stress, which comes from interpersonal relationships in the workplace. You would have thought it would have been in the home, but when you really think about it, you spend most of your time, your waking hours in the office, right? if you are at work. So it is important to take to work that consciousness which builds 
from deep within. So that radiance, which is love, can emanate from you and, and touch anyone who comes into your presence. You can step into the workplace with the intention of just being love, not doing love, being love. And you will naturally do loving things, speak loving words. You can be in a meeting, you know, some meetings can be quite contentious, right? And you are in the middle of contributing to debate and wrestling with ideas. Just back up for a moment. Back up, be still, take a moment to ponder, just to ponder quietly. Love. And you will watch and see exactly what begins to happen in that setting. People begin to hear each other, hear. Because people can be listening, you know, and can be talking and not really hearing. They might even think they're listening and not hearing. People begin to understand, people begin to cooperate. Try it. Every relationship you have ever had with someone else exactly mirrors one or more aspects of the relationship that you have with yourself, yourself. If we accept that we are created by God of love in the image and likeness of God, we will identify with that which we are alike. If our idea of God is goodness, then we will love ourselves for the qualities of God eminent in us. As we love ourselves, we discover that the divine attributes are to be found in everyone. If that love comes, not from narcissistic love, but from a love which knows that the love which I am, all the beauty, every, all the goodness that I am, is really the point at which God the living spirit almighty is manifesting. The only access we have to God is from our own awareness. Therefore, inner awareness. Let us promise ourselves to spend time with God in the silence. We are always with God and we can turn within at any time. But it is very good if we will take time out to just have no agenda, just to bask in the glory of being, just to be. Not praying, not meditating, not reading, not contemplating, just to turn up and see what happens. It is in that kind of non-attached openness that we tap into the wellspring of life and we draw beauty and peace and a sense of awe and adoration which we make our love. And this is what when we tap into that and we turn our attention outwards, then people, places, and things experience that which we have tapped into. Love is about being. Doing is one of the fruits of love. Love is not a thing or a feeling or an action. It is a principle. It is a synonym for God. It cannot be seen. To know it is to experience it. It is to be it. It is easy to be so caught up in the business of doing loving things because it's the right thing to do that we forget the heart of love, the being of love. Dr. David Walker, in a Science of Mind Minister's workshop that Reverend, Anna, Reverend John and I attended, said this, we think we please ourselves by trying to accomplish something but this is a trap. If you accept yourselves only because you accomplished something, you haven't really accepted yourself. You have forgotten who you are. You are worth more than you will ever accomplish. And he gave us this affirmation, I am enough now and through eternity. And I want to share it with you. I am enough now and through eternity. Let's say it together. I am enough now and through eternity. No. You see, the uniting power of love, we got a hint of it in the model prayer taught to us by Jesus the Christ, which we call the Lord's Prayer. 
You notice he says, our father. Our father. He didn't say your father or my father. He said, our father. And that is the hint that we start with. We start with God and know that we are all one in God, the same family with God. And when we um, know this, we know that there are people who may come into our lives with which we may feel a little bit of contentiousness or whatever we may label it because it's just a label. We feel uncomfortable because maybe our energy is shifted into feeling a little bit negative. But um, I went to a workshop with a Samuel Bailey, and I'll share a little bit of it just in a while. And he said, some people come into your life, and some come through your life. They come because they have a divine assignment to program something in you. Learn to know when the assignment is over and let it go. Let it go. It doesn't mean that you let them go. You know that you have graduated. And so when you're graduated, you don't want to keep going back to the universe just because you love it, right? My husband said he loved Casey so much that he, he didn't want to leave at all, right? It was so wonderful for him, right, Mike? Right? <laughs> I know, I know. He was forced to graduate, but he loved it so much. I think that's why they keep going back over and over, right? And so we know that God is one, and that one includes everyone. And so when we know that, we know that all the qualities of God, which is in us, is also in everyone else. We have known that love heals, love protects, and uh, oh, I share this with you too. Um, this is something that Dr. Tom Costa said also to the group of ministers, right? Um, he was, he's one of those very direct persons. He says, um, work on yourself more than you work on your church and watch things unfold. It was very direct. When anybody, anywhere, church, anywhere that you find yourself in a leadership position, anywhere, nationally or otherwise, if you're working on yourself, then watch things unfold. You will see the results. You don't have to be worrying about other people. So those of us who are worrying about Jamaica right now. Jamaica is fine. Jamaica is wonderful. Work on ourselves and see what unfolds in our lives. And you know, Dr. Holmes, Dr. David Walker, he, I, those, some of us remember him, lovely man. He's now gone on to other callings, right? He, he had this, 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 knack of saying things so simply, and therefore I reaffirm this again. He says, we think, remember I said it earlier, we think we please others by trying to accomplish something. But this is a trap. If you accept yourself only because you accomplish something, you haven't really accepted yourself. You have forgotten who you are. You are worth more than you will ever accomplish. I say this because many persons who I have in counseling in my practice are high, very accomplished people who are operating at the highest level of their career path. But they have not, they have been so obsessed with doing all for good reasons that they have not spent time to look at their own beauty. And uh, they have now to unlearn some of the habits of being anxious, worried, depressed, if they are, have not achieved the perfection which has been programmed within them at birth to see, rather than the perfection of the God presence within. So it is important for us to see our beauty and our true being. That is what we need to see. If we are programmed to know that this beauty and true being the beauty of our true being is within us. Then that know that that doesn't change. It is there all the while if we love the work, if we didn't finish the assignment, if any of the things that we have set ourselves to be so important. And guess what? They will get done. They will get done anyway. So 
If you live in the moment, cherish the moment. Now, a few practical words from this workshop I went to by a man called Simon Bale. I'd never heard of him before. Um, Reverend Sheila um, sponsored it, and I went on behalf of the church. I have kept these ideas with me, and I've wanted to share them for a long time. This gentleman has taken the teaching of new thought into entrepreneurship and has become an extremely successful person. And so he focuses on the prospering power of love. And there is such a book. I invite you to read that book because it's, it doesn't speak about prosperity in a very narrow sense. It's by Catherine Ponder. But these are some little gems I got from the workshop. He says, you become uncomfortable being comfortable when it is time to move to another level. So sometimes somebody comes into your life and you think they are making you feel uncomfortable by what they are saying. But here it is a little bit of a mouthful. You become uncomfortable being comfortable when it is time to move to another level. We need to move on and sometimes we can get so self-absorbed and self-satisfied that we can't really look out and see the role another person is playing in our lives. He said, we are each born in brilliance to be brilliant. And he says, only a diamond can cut a diamond. So since you, we are the diamond, we must do the work upon ourselves to make that diamond brilliant. He said, brilliance is a marathon, it's not a sprint. So don't think that because we say the words today that tomorrow we're going to get up and we have the, you know, the, all the brilliance and gleam. And so that's one of the things that we have discussed as ministers, that sometimes we may not be sure that we are getting it across to you, that because we say the word, when we say the word, the seed is already planted, but the tree don't grow yet, right? So we don't get impatient and start to dig up the seed and say, boy, how the seed not good and, you know, maybe never planted properly, right? It is a mar brilliance is a marathon, and it is not a sprint. He asks us, and these are some practical things to ask ourselves, do an audit. And he says, try to do it at least every 90 days, right? He says, ask, where have I been up to until now? Why am I here? You can look at it any way you want. What can I do? And where am I going? And he said, after you have got all of these questions right, then you convert them into your goals. And anyone, he says, who is destined to help you when you have got this right, will come into your life in a relationship that will show up where they can really help you. But you have to get the idea first, or you attract into your life people who may be a hindrance rather than a help. You have to know what you want, and then the people will come. And I once heard of a story where if you know, for example, in relationships, many of us want to have relationships that are meaningful and intimate. Once we are thinking about getting into a relationship, we are actually separating ourselves from that goal. Once we think and know that we have a goal of experiencing in our lifetime, loving, intimate, call it whatever you want. Please don't bother to talk about the man tall, him have money, him can support you and all of that. Yeah, that's... You can, I'm not saying don't say that, but what you're really after is a deeper feeling, which is an attrib the attributes of God. So you, you get that into yourself, and believe you me, if the man is on the moon, the woman is on the moon, they will find you, and they are looking for the same thing that you are looking for, and they will find you wherever you are. I've heard of so many stories that confirms this. So I say to you, in closing, fellow travelers, let us know that the greatest love of all, remember how beautiful it was sung by Christina, the greatest love of all is the love which starts with self. It begins within you. The God of self is within. It is the Christ. Know that you deserve to have a good life and affirm daily, as I recommend to you, words like this. Use your own words, but I like these. I deserve to have a good life. I intend to continue to have a good life because you already have a good life. You, know, you just have to give thanks for what you have and make it multiply, right? I expect to have an even better life. 
I accept the best life ever for myself. Because why? I am the instrument through which life flows. So I'm going to give you the word line by line and let us use the energy of the collective consciousness to affirm it. The first line, I deserve to have a good life. I deserve to have a good life. I intend to continue to have a good life. I intend to continue to have a good life. I expect to have an even better life. I expect to have an even better life. I accept the best life ever for myself. I accept the best life ever for myself because I am, an, I am the instrument through which life flows. I am the instrument through which life flows. Thank you for being a part of the ceremony by your collective consciousness. Namaste.